I know it looks like it's old, but it's still a staple of surgical areas and small procedure areas throughout the world. The Xenon light source. Let's take a look. I'll tear it apart. And we'll see what makes this bad boy tick. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. guys what we have here is a xenon light source and this is a device that's designed to give out light very high intense light for doctors so that they can carry out surgical procedures now a light source connects a light cord right here using the turret which accommodates various diameters and formats of light cords to a laparoscopic system or a doctor's headlight so he can see what he's doing but on the front panel, this is pretty much generic of all light sources in one way or the other. You have your power switch, of course. You have your turret, which some of them don't have turret if they're proprietary. You have a diffuser right here, which dims the light. And on this particular model, you have the light module itself right here. Let's take a look at that light. So this is a light module, and inside it, there is the xenon bulb right there. Now, it's going to be either a 300 watt or 175 watt here in the United States, but as you can see, there's no wires that go to the bulb. That's because the electricity is actually conducted to the bulb through the heat sinks. That's why we never touch these heat sinks while it's actually lit up and powered. On the bulb, you can see we have this white paste which not only acts as a thermal compound, but it's also a conductive agent to allow the bulb to better conduct electricity from the heat sink itself. Now this particular bulb is being held in by tension with these clamps right here, but at the same time, on the very back of the bulb, you can see that we have a series of small Allen screws which screw directly into the back of the bulb. We have some silicone type wiring because this bulb operates on high voltage to ignite the gap. So right inside that bulb, we have an anode and we have a cathode. And the electrons flow from one to the other, but they need a high voltage arc to get that ignited. And once the gas is ignited, then it will convert over and it starts utilizing a low voltage, high amperage current to maintain the arc. So that's how xenon works. It's a gas that is ignited with a high voltage arc, and then once it's ignited, it kicks over to a low voltage, high amperage current to keep it going. So because that high voltage, we have silicone 300,000 volt DC cables, and that's a common theme. You'll see silicone wiring inside when we open it up and take a look. We have banana plugs on this particular unit that give energy to the bulb. But also, notice these two little ones, the little wires right here, because this bulb carrier has an integrated hours counter. See that? Kind of cool. It's all mounted on a fiberglass uh, base because it separates the components. So that's the bulb itself. Let's take a look inside the actual device and see what we got. All right, I know it's an oldie, but this guy has the common theme that you're going to see through all Xenon light sources. So here inside, our AC power comes in where it's interrupted by two interlocks. So I have an interlock up here at the top, and I have an interlock down here that detects when the bulb is fully inserted. Now this interlock down here, I'll tell you right now, the interlock for either the door to the outside of the device or the bulb in this case is almost always going to be a problem because the users are going to complain that the device isn't powering up so I always suggest check the interlocks on the doors or the covers because that's very common a problem and even on this one right here I can see that the interlock is slightly bent which means 
is possible it's not going to detect the bulb as well as it could. But anyway, here we are. As the power comes in, it goes past the interlocks. It's going to do one particular thing. It's going to go through the EMI filter, and then it's going to come back here to the power supply where you have a high voltage side over here, and you have a low voltage side over here. Notice the low voltage has got the massive heat sinks on it because like I said, it's low voltage, high current, and that's what maintains the spark inside the bulb. Over here on the high voltage side, there's a large component. Let's see if I can get it in for y'all. So there's a large coil right here, but then there's a spark gapper right here. And you can see that component right here. So what happens when you go ahead and try to fire up the bulb, there's a little spark gap right here that's going to go tick, 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 tick. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to go across the gap here so that it can then kick over to low voltage. And because it hasn't exactly done that, it's going to sit there and tick. And one of the most common problems with these light sources is your bulb. So the problem with it is that the gap in your bulb, as it goes on with its life, the gap gets larger. And when the gap gets larger, it tends to want to arc over to the reflector, the parabolic reflector inside the lamp. When it does that, it's no longer going directly to the anode. And because of that, it's going to put extra stress on this power supply over here. So if you ever hear this guy going tick, 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 first check the bulb. Now the bulb is only about what, two, $220. This power supply and power supplies in these Xenon light sources, they're easily $1,200 to $2,500 depend on the light source. So always change the bulb if it's not lighting up. So here I've got the bulb. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. It activated the first interlock and there's the second one. So you can see that I have back here AC powered fans. Some of these units will have DC powered fans, which kind of gives you an indicator about your power supply. But these are AC powered fans and it looks like they split off right here off of mains. So as soon as you activate mains for the device, these guys are always on. On this particular unit, you can see that the light path goes this way and then it reflects off a 45 degree prism. So the light beam goes this way into a light concentrator and it looks like it's got a coating on it so it's also a type of filter and then it goes through this guy right here which is your diffuser grating and a diffuser is actually just a simple contraption it's a piece of sheet steel that's got different perforations of different densities and that simple piece right there so it actually gives you your dimming effect so the light comes through, goes out this way, through your turret and into your light cord where it goes out to your patient treatment area, which is going to be either a laparoscopic set or your doctor's headset itself. So let's take a look at the airflow through this device and how it can cool itself. Here you can see that there's a center partition, which means the air is gonna come through this grating right here, go across the power supply, where it comes around the light assembly itself and then it comes through here does actually cool down the prism over here and then it gets blown out with the two AC fans over here on this side very simple air path but what it means is that the whole entire device will get dirty now this might be an older design they weren't very efficient with real estate but you can see that it gets very dirty on the inside I've got a lot of dirt over here there's a lot of dirt up here. This guy here often gets very, very dirty. And this guy over here is probably going to get pretty dirty. I can see a bunch of stuff in here. So when you do a PM on these guys, I highly recommend you open it up, go ahead and vacuum it out when it's unplugged, and then visually inspect your bulb, guys. You're going to have to visually inspect the bulb to see if it's starting to arc over to the parabolic reflector to make sure that it's not arcing over to the glass, which does happen sometimes but it's gonna give you a visual indicator of the life of your bulb because as you can tell on this guy, I probably do not know how old this bulb is. This is an older analog unit. 
It doesn't give me a visual indicator saying, hey, my bulb is past 500 hours. Over here, I want you guys to take notice that this is the silicone wiring that I mentioned earlier. This is going to be your high voltage that comes into here. So these wires have to be silicone because they need that, that level of insulation because of the high voltage. If you are ever troubleshooting inside this device, the first thing you're always going to check is your interlocks. A very, very high percentage of these guys are just problems with the interlocks. Maybe it's bent, maybe it's malaligned. Sometimes it's the outside cover that is just bent so it's not coming completely closed. All sorts of problems with these are related to the interlocks. The next most common problem is obviously your bulb. Your bulb controls the power supply per se, but because of that, your power supply is going to work harder if your account is very used to using old bulbs. And that is pretty much it about these light sources. They're actually a very simple device, but you have to respect them when they're open. This is all technically live. This is all technically live, especially if you're going to cheat your interlocks. So be careful, guys. These things can really hurt you and light you up if you're not careful. Well, guys, I hope you found that a little bit interesting. I know light sources can be a little bland of a subject, but these things here can cost you a lot of money if you don't maintain them properly and if you're just reckless with the parts that you buy for them. So take your time, be safe when you open them up and troubleshoot them, and most of these failures can be mitigated with just a proper PM and cleaning. That's all I have for you guys on light sources. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up and like this video because it helps YouTube know that I'm doing something right around here. Thanks again for watching, guys.